In this tutorial we're going to take the golf award assembly which we created in the previous tutorial and we're going to set up the roughing and 3D toolpaths and then we're going to finish by projecting a V-carve toolpath onto the 3D model to create what you can see on screen. If you missed this I have put a link in the related video section of the tutorial browser so you can go ahead and create this assembly for yourself. If not there will be a file in the tutorials folders which we are about to open up. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close this and then I'm going to go into my existing files and from the tutorials files folder if you go to the golf award files you'll find the golf award 3d assembly.crv simply select that and then click open and this will open up the job that we created in the previous tutorial as you can see now we can work with both the 2d view and the 3d view at the same time so how I'm going to do this I'm just going to click this button here to arrange the views vertically and the first thing I'm going to do before we go ahead and create any toolpaths is create a boundary for the actual toolpath itself. As I don't want to actually machine away the actual surface of the material as I do plan to cut this model from the top of the material block. So what I'm going to do to save on time for the toolpath is I'm going to create a vector boundary. So how I do that is I simply just select the outer oval and I sort of get an idea of the actual size and dimension of the circle. So as you can see down the bottom right when I just click on this you'll see that it says width 7.5 and height 7.5 inches. So all I need to do is I'm going to go into the draw circle tool and I'm going to set the center point as we can see at the moment our x0, y0 is in the center and the actual x, y datum position is also in the center of our job. So all I need to do is make sure that the center point is there and that means the circle is going to come out from that center point and I just need to specify the diameter. So I'm just going to type in 7.5 inches and press create and you'll notice that that circle is now exactly around the outside of our 3D model. And that's all we need to do for the drawing side of things so I'm going to simply come up to the top and I'm going to switch to the toolpath commands like so. Now before we go ahead and create any toolpaths it's important that we always check the material setup and how we do that is we simply just click on the set button here and we just go over the details and change any if we need to so I'm just going to reconfirm that the thickness of the material is half an inch and we can set our x y datum position if we need to now it's currently set in the center now for positioning purposes I may want to actually change that to the lower left hand corner so that is what I'm going to change that to we're going to Z0 the tool off the material surface. Now this is going to be important because we are actually going to be putting the model position in the material at the top of the block. And when we do this, it's very important that the material that we're using is exactly the same height throughout the whole of the material. Otherwise, we'll end up with flat spots. So in the next section, just make sure that the model position in material is actually all the way up to the top. So make sure that slider is at the top here and the gap above model reads 0 inches. Then we can move on to the rapid Z gaps above material. Now this is just the clearance and plunge move so we just need to make sure that this height is the height above any clamps or anything that's on the material, maybe any screws that may be sticking out of the material. Just make sure that this height that we specify here is actually above that height. Then we can move down to the home start position. So we can see that the tool is going to be starting at x0, y0, which we've now positioned in the lower left hand corner. And we've got a z gap above the material at half an inch. Once we've specified all these parameters and simply press OK. Now the first toolpath that we're going to create is our 3D roughing toolpath, which is going to hog away the majority of the material before we go ahead and create that finish pass. So how we do that is we simply come up to this icon here and click on that. And the first option it'll ask us to specify is the tool. So let's go into the tool database and for this I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. So I'm just going to go ahead under the end mill section and just select that and I'm just going to go ahead and press OK. And for the machining limit boundary we're going to select here these selected vectors. Now at the moment we haven't actually selected our vector but if we go into the 2D view we can simply go ahead and select that and now you can see that that circle that we created is now highlighted. Now for this example we don't need to create a boundary offset and the machining allowance we're going to leave roughly around four hundredths of an inch. So I'm just going to put 0.04 in the machining allowance. So that's just the material that's going to be left by the roughing toolpath which the finishing tool is going to 
be able to just cut away. So it's a very small amount and the finishing tool will easily deal with that amount. And the roughing strategy that we're going to apply is a 2D Z level uh, roughing strategy. We're going to be rastering in the X axis and we're going to have profile set to last, which just means afterwards it's going to go ahead and profile all the uh, jagged corners which have been left by literally the tool going from left to right in a continuous pattern. Then we can go ahead and give this toolpath a name. So I'm just going to call this 3D Roughing and I'm just going to specify some details about the tool. So I'm just going to put 025 EM for end mill and then calculate like so. And then we can go in straight into the preview toolpath form and you can see that the toolpath is visible and also the path that the toolpath will take is clearly visible also in the 3D view. And then we can simply just go ahead and just preview the selected toolpath. And you'll see, once this is finished, you'll see the stages that this has gone in. And basically it's just gone down the past depth of the tool each time, and it's gone down three times. So once, twice, and three, like so. And now we're ready to create our finishing pass. So all we need to do is simply close the preview toolpath form, like so. And we just go into the 3D finishing toolpath. And the first thing we're going to do is select our tool. So from the tool database, I'm going to go ahead and select a eighth inch ball nose tool, like so, and simply press OK. Now, if I wanted to edit any of the parameters of that tool, just specifically for any of the toolpaths I'm creating in this project, I can simply go ahead and press the edit button here. And I may just want to change the step over slightly. So I may just want to bring that down to maybe around 8% and actually just speed up the feed rate a little. So I may just change that to 100 inches a minute, like so, and then press OK. Again, we're going to make sure that the machining limit boundary is the selected vector, and the vector is still selected, as you can see. We're not going to add any boundary offset. Um, the best strategy for this, being a round object, would probably be the offset strategy. So I'm just going to leave that selected, and simply just going to go ahead and give this a name. So 3D finish, and it's going to put 0125BN for ball nose, and then press calculate. Now, any 3D toolpath actually normally would take longer than most toolpaths in the software, as they're making quite a lot of minute moves. So they do take longer to calculate and also preview. So if I just go ahead and now preview this, you'll see that we've got that offset strategy. This would be good for actually keeping the circular edges on the actual part once it's finished. And if we just zoom in, so we just expand the 3D view and just get a closer look, you see that looks quite nice. But if we actually zoom in a little bit more, you'll see that we've got a lot of markings from the tool. Now this is because the tool is larger than the areas it's trying to get into. So it's left some tool radius marks, as you can see. Now the way we would actually get around this, if we weren't happy with the finish, uh, we can either obviously manually finish it off the machine. That can be quite time consuming or we could actually just change the tool for a smaller one. Now this does mean that the toolpath is likely to be longer than it originally is at the moment, but it also means that there's less hand finishing to do. So obviously we need to make that decision consciously when we're creating these types of toolpaths. So what I'm going to do in this is I'm actually going to create uh, another toolpath or use the same one, just use a smaller tool. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click the 3D finish toolpath and go back into the tool database and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a new tool. I'm going to create a taper ball nose tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all I'm going to position it in the ball nose section. So I'm just going to highlight that name and click new. And then it will ask me for the tool type. So I'm just going to go and select the taper ball nose from that tool type, like so. This will give us all uh, some default parameters. And I'm just going to go ahead and specify some details. So I'm going to specify a quarter inch diameter. I'm going to specify a side angle of three degrees. I'm going to specify a tip radius of 1 32nd of an inch. So I may actually just want to type the equation into that. So 1 divided by 32 and press the equals key. That will give us that tip radius. I'm going to specify a pass depth of 4 hundredths of an inch, like so. And the step over at 8%. I'm going to leave that at 8% and also the clearance pass step over. And I'm also going to leave the rest of the feeds and speeds all the same as well. So once I've done that, I can simply press OK, and that'll accept that for me. 
and then everything else should remain the same. We should also still have the vector selected as you can see in the 2D view. So all we need to do is actually just recalculate this. And I might actually want to also just rename this to, I'm just going to put taper BM like so and press calculate. Now because we're using a smaller tool this time with an even smaller step over, this actually is going to take longer than the previous toolpath to calculate and also preview as well. So with that calculated, let's go ahead and preview that toolpath. Now I'm not going to reset the preview here, I'm just going to preview the new taper ball nose toolpath on top of the previous toolpath just so you can see the difference being created where the tool originally couldn't fit in. So let's go ahead and preview that and see straight away the difference that the taper ball nose is making not only to the definition of this wreath but also around the edges of all of the clip art as well. So once that's done, you can take a closer look at the part. You can see that's definitely cleaned that up and it looks a much nicer finish now. And you're going to have rarely anything to actually manually hand finish, which is going to be great. So the last thing for us to actually create now is our V-carve toolpath, which we're going to actually project onto the 3D model. So let's close the preview toolpath form. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into the V-carve toolpath and we're going to go into the 2D view just momentarily and just select the text like so as this is what we're going to be engraving and we're going to specify the start depth from the top of the material so zero zero and we're not going to have any flat depth as we're not cutting or planning on cutting very deep we're going to specify our tool to be a 60 degree V bit of a quarter of an inch so that's already selected in my case so I'm just going to go ahead and press OK there and then we can come down and what we're going to do is we're going to project this toolpath onto the 3D model now because we've got a start depth of zero, it means basically the toolpath is going to find the very surface, no matter what curvature the 3D model is on, it's going to lay it perfectly so it's equally cut into that uh, surface of the material. If we wanted to create the V-carving a little deeper, we may just want to add a little bit more of a start depth, which would just basically increase from the top of the material where it's projected onto, just more down into the material. But we need to be careful when we're doing that, obviously, as we don't want to drive the tool too far in. So once we've selected this option, simply just give that a name. I'm just going to call this V-carve V60, and then just press calculate, like so. And then I'm just going to go ahead and preview that like so. And you can see that's perfectly laid that onto that banner there, as you can see. And the only thing left for me to do here would be to actually save out the toolpaths. So you just go into the save toolpaths form, you'd select your post-processor most appropriate for your machine or your control software, and you'd go ahead, save those out, and then run those on the machine. Now, as with any project that we create, we should always make sure that we save our work just in case we need to come back and edit something or even edit any of the toolpaths to output the game. So I'm just going to go to File and Save. And I'm just going to save this as Golf Award underscore 3D underscore toolpath and then press Save like so. And with that comes the end of this tutorial. Thanks for watching.